Today we're making microwave macaroni and cheese. There are many versions that you can find for macaroni and cheese on the internet. Um, a lot of them are made using just the stove top and then some of them are also baked in the oven. This recipe is just for the microwave so that when you go off to college, if uh, you're living in a dorm room and all you have is a microwave, you could make this in your dorm room. The first step you want to do is we need four tablespoons of butter. And so make sure that you read the label on the butter. The butter always has where it's marked. And as you notice, this one, uh, that would be one tablespoon there, but it's, the butter's never wrapped perfectly. So when you're cutting it off, just kind of estimate and do your best guess. So we need four tablespoons. So one, two, three, four. But because it started a little bit too far over there, I'm gonna go about there. So use the wrapper so that you save yourself time and mess because you don't want to be pushing it into the measuring cup and then having to clean out the measuring cup. So you have four tablespoons of butter, you're just going to chop it up into little cubes. And butter kind of sticks to the knife. Okay, so you want your cubes about that size, and I'll finish doing that in a minute. So about that size is fine, and I'll, I'll chop these up a little bit better. The next thing we're going to do is we need three tablespoons of chopped onion. So I'll set my butter aside. Let's pause it there while I get the onion clean. Okay, so now that my onion is clean, I'm just going to cut off a bit of the onion. Um, I need three tablespoons of chopped onion, so we'll chop that up and then see how much I have. And of course, you want it to be pretty fine. The onion is there for flavoring. You don't want to have a big chunk of onion, so you'll slice it pretty thinly. Chop. Mince, mincing it up, really. And then to see about how much you have, go ahead and use your so there's one tablespoon. Two tablespoons. And I need to chop a little bit more. We'll, we'll pause there. Okay, so here's my third tablespoon of minced onion. And now I'm going to start adding my first seven ingredients into a two quart casserole dish. First, I need one and a half cups of uncooked macaroni and this is the elbow macaroni and of course we are using whole wheat. And a half. Then I need one and a half cups of hot water and remember that you always measure the bottom of the curve, the meniscus, from the bottom. One and a half cups of hot water. Then I need my butter and my onion. Then I need a half teaspoon of salt. <clears throat> and remember that you can use the lid to level. I need an eighth teaspoon of pepper. Oh, let's pause, this one only has a quarter. An eighth teaspoon of pepper. and an eighth teaspoon of ground mustard. Ground mustard is um, just the mustard seed that's been ground up. Okay. 
And that's it. So I'm just going to kind of use my knife here since it was handy. Kind of just make sure the noodles are at least all wet. Stir this around just a little bit. <clears throat> and then I'm going to microwave this on high for three minutes and make sure that you have it covered with the lid. So let me put the lid on. And we'll microwave this on high for three minutes. Okay, you have your dish in the microwave. Then you can check, read your own microwave. This one, if you push the cook time power button, then you can see the power is at 100%, which is what we want. And then I'll just push, you may want to push the back button, or you may not have to, but th easy three minutes. When your three minutes are up, you're going to very carefully, make sure you have two pot holders, and very carefully lift the casserole dish out of the microwave. And then you're just gonna stir it up. And then put it back in for another three minutes. Um, the original recipe said to cook it for the second three minutes on half power, but I found that with our microwaves in school, we need to keep them on full power. So okay, very carefully, making sure that you're not spilling it on yourself, shut the door, and do another three minutes. We want it to come to a boil. Now I need one cup of milk, okay, and a quarter cup of flour. And then I'm going to mix this together. The flour helps to thicken the milk. And then I'm going to pour this over my macaroni. So I will go ahead and get my macaroni back out of my microwave. While my macaroni is in the microwave, I need four, excuse me, I need six ounces of cubed Velveeta cheese. And just like the butter, it is labeled. These are four ounce sections. So I just need to do a four ounce, and then to get six ounces, I cut in half of between the two four ounces. So I'll go in half there. And then I will unwrap this and cube this just like I cubed the butter. That's good enough. Now I'm going to take my flour and milk mixture, pour it over, stir that into my macaroni. Then I will add my cheese. <clears throat> Put this back in the microwave <clears throat> for another six to eight minutes or until the macaroni is tender and the sauce is bubbling. Um, I will stir it every three minutes. So I'm going to, 
a total of six to eight minutes, but after three minutes, I'll take it out. It's and stir been three it. minutes, so I need to take it out and stir it. But I wanted you to know it may bubble over, and there's not much you can do about that. That's going to happen. And it will make a mess, but we'll talk about how to clean that up later. So I'm just going to stir this. You can see it's starting to look like macaroni and cheese now. Put that back in for another three minutes. We're going to take it out Stir again. It. We still see now we have a cheesy mess on the bottom. Stir it up. And you could, let's see, it's definitely steaming, but it's not boiling, so. Um, you could take a fork and test it and see if the noodles are al dente, which I'm going to do. So let's pause there while I check. Okay, the, um, I think the noodles need just a little bit longer and the sauce wasn't bubbling, so I am going to put it in for the last two minutes. Okay, when your macaroni is done, take it out of the microwave, <clears throat> give it a stir, and it's going to be very too hot to eat. So. Uh, just let it cool off for a second, and while you're letting it cool, you can start working on the microwave. As you can see, the glass plate is quite dirty, and some of the sauce may have even splashed up and splattered on the microwave walls. Ours doesn't look too bad, but still, you are going to want to wipe the whole entire inside and the bottom. This rotator can come out too and wipe the, all, everything on the bottom as well. This glass dish can be washed, but wait until it gets to room temperature before you put it in the water. We don't want it to crack from a change in temperature. So just let it cool off a little bit before you wash it. I just want to point out that when you're washing your whisk, uh, the flour will have a tendency to stick to it. So make sure you do a really good job and check the inside of the whisk to make sure that you got it thoroughly cleaned before your dish check. When you're washing your dishes, make sure that you rinse them off before you put them in your hot soapy water. That way you don't get all of your, your dish water filled with cheese and get it all gross. So rinse everything out. And I'll just let water run in that while I'm washing my other dishes. And I'll come back and wash these plates, top and bottom, while I'm letting my macaroni and cheese bowl get, get rinsed out. Okay, now to wipe the microwave, um, <clears throat> wipe the doors, wipe the bottom, wipe the lid because when it boils, it boils up. Not the lid, the roof. back wall. Then when you put the rotator back in, make sure it fits, then put the dish. There are edges, grooves, and you need to make sure that the grooves fit in. Don't just throw it back in there and let it go. It shouldn't be wobbly like that. If it's wobbly, it's not going to turn for the next class. So put it in and turn the plate until it settles down the way it should be. And of course, make sure that you wipe all the mess off of your stove top. And because cheese likes to stick, you'll have to put a little bit of muscle into it to get the cheese off. And of course, you may need to rinse your dishcloth out and then come back and get it again. <clears throat> 